Welcome back to another of the December kit builds. Starting off today with an old favorite grandpa's sweater, Oatmeal Stout, from Barnhammer Brewing in Winnipeg. Seems like an appropriate beer for a celebratory time of year. And by appropriate, I mean something comforting and enjoyable. So today's kit is going to be a lot more uh, simple and straightforward than the one that I did last week. However, it does have some similarities. It's got a bunch of LEDs and it has a microcontroller at the core of it. Here's the microcontroller and its socket. Nicely packaged uh, to protect the pins. With a USB cable. Bunch of resistors, bunch of LEDs, USB for power, some header pins, a switch, some screws and standoffs. And of course, the star of the show, the board. The star seemed like a reasonable motif for this time of year. They seem to be fairly popular. So there is, I think, the display side of the board. And there's the component side. I think that's how it goes anyways. So we have 50 LEDs by the looks of it. Looking at the tracks and the microcontroller, it looks like each pin goes to two LEDs on this side. And then there's a common to a bunch of them over that side. Um, and the reason I'm doing a lot of guessing here is because I don't have uh, the listing for this and I don't have any manual or anything so I'm kind of running blind a little bit but I am going to do a bit more searching um, you never know so I did a bunch of searching around I looked through like two years of my eBay purchase history and I couldn't find it I searched for various different combinations of the types of wording I might have expected and I found similar kits with heart shapes on them and random stars that aren't it I did find this one, which isn't the same kit. It's interesting, but it's not the same. This one has a remote control and a speaker and a few other things going on. And the board is clearly different. And then I found this one at IC Station, uh, which looks quite similar, but it has different resistor counts. Uh, mine has like two resistors in each of the three corners. This one has two resistors up there and four there and four there. So it's in some ways different, though it does have the same chip on it and it does have 50 LEDs. So though there is this on the board, so maybe there'd be some information there. That's the obvious place to look, I guess, isn't it? Hmm. That may not be as helpful as I thought it was going to be. Oh, hello. That looks familiar. Yeah, that is the same board, isn't it? Yes, the resistor is in those positions. The logo is slightly different there. It's a slightly different screen print, but other than that, it's... Oh, and this one's got a barrel jack, whereas mine has a little USB connector on it. Okay. Now, do they have any instructions or manual or anything? Oh, so this looks different from the IC Station one. Okay, so it's using 25 pins on the negative sides to control each pair for a total of 50 LEDs. And then half the LEDs of each pair go to one resistor and half go to the other. So it's a little bit naughty that way. So since they're going to be probably multiplexing them fast, there's only going to be one LED worth of current being drawn through each pin through the resistor. So other than that, there's not a hell of a lot to this thing electrically, so I guess we might as well just get to building. So it says that these are colorful LEDs or RGB LEDs, which I assume means they're going to be the self-flashing ones again. Yep. A medium, a slow, and then a fast. But it's probably never going to get to that fast stage because these are going to be cycling through so quickly. So it'll start with the first color and maybe get into the second one or the third one. So it'll probably never get past that part of the sequence. 
which is okay. That allows them to get a whole bunch of color without uh, having to address them as RGB. And these are relatively cheap compared to the NeoPixel addressable style LEDs. So, so we'll start with, what should we start with? Hmm. We're kind of going on our own this time. I think I will start with the IC socket. It is the least uh, damageable. So again, putting the notch on the socket to match the notch on the board, which will match the notch on the chip, meaning that pin one is in that top left corner over here. And as usual with any multi-pin device, solder a couple of corners, just to hold it in place. Give it a little push from the back. It's solidly in place. And just bang through all the pins. I guess next might as well do the resistors. And again, they're all the same. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten of 1K resistor. So it doesn't matter where I put them or what order they, they go in. And there's even two resistors left. How generous of them. Let's put the switch in next. We have the DPDT switch with a couple of mounting pins. Sort of mounting pins first, so that everything else is held in alignment. And those are the hardest ones to solder too because they are all on this big chunk of metal here so they pull a lot of the heat away from the soldering iron tip and now just get the electrical pins looks like only a couple of them really matter but i'm going to do them all anyway just to give it some extra mechanical strength there's no reason not to Next then we have the Wii USB connector. Now again, it's only got the power and ground pins wired out to anything, but I am going to solder down the mounting pins just, just to make it nice and rigid. That's some pretty fine pins. I think they're soldered very reasonably. I suppose I could test it before I start putting in the active components. Just use my little power bank there. Grab a random voltmeter from the pile. And then this pair of header pins here should be voltage. Yes, it is. And it's even the correct polarity. And the power switch works. Nice. All right, I guess all there is left is to put in a whole bunch of LEDs. Oh. Yeah, the programming pins. Should I bother putting them in? Again, it's an STC microcontroller. I have never programmed an STC and I don't have any of the tool chain for it. I think I will just uh, leave those out because they're not really serving any purpose. So the labeling on the board just shows the positive side on the right hand side of most of these LEDs. Oh no, up this side, it's on the left hand side. Okay, I'm going to have to pay attention to that. So the positive lead, as we have learned in the past, and as the tester verified, is the long lead. So, let's put a few in. Should I put them right tight to the board? Or should I leave them standing off the board like that? I think I will put them right tight to the board for no particular reason other than that it's easier to get a consistent positioning. 
I think maybe I'll do a few at a time just so that it doesn't get to be an awkward uh, mess of pins. That'll do. This is going to just be another rinse and repeat sort of a thing here. Solder one leg down, push it up from below. Let it cool. Solder the other pin down and repeat. So as it gets down to the last six LEDs, I'm running into the problem that I often do, trying to figure out how to hold the thing without interfering with myself. I think I can do it that way. Yeah, that should work. That's easier than a lot of boards. These LEDs, I'm just making sure that I've got the polarity right because it seems to change polarity on some of the corners. I'm assuming that was done just to make the track layout a little bit easier even though the blue tech's doing a pretty good job of holding everything in alignment i still like to check before i solder the second lead down just to make sure and there's the last three leds and i've got a bunch left over thank you whoever put this kit together I always like to have a few spare components that I can play with later. Those out of the way for now. Looks like all that's left to do is put the standoffs on to be feet on this thing. There we go. Yeah, right. I guess we're going to need the chip, aren't we? How does that look? Those pins look nice and straight. Not bent or anything. They're splayed a little bit wide. Do that trick on it a little bit so that it'll fit into the socket nicer. All lined on that side. Pull it over a little bit. All end on that side, nothing tucked under. Push it home and double check that nothing bent out. That looks good. Let's give the board a quick once over. A couple of these LEDs are a little shy on solder, but they've all got some on them. And all the other components seem to have solder on them. That one's a little shy, but it's, it is soldered. Place your bets. Is it going to work or not work? Fail spectacularly. Um, or the long shot bet of Electroboom. I see light on all of the LEDs. There's a good one for testing. It looks like it goes all the way around. It's 41 light, yes. Now there's no way to control the patterns on this thing. They just do what they're going to do. So I'm going to call that a success. As we saw on the website, there are some that come with an acrylic shell. This one obviously was the cheaper one because I'm the cheaper one. Um, if the acrylic shell was frosted or smoked or something, I think that would look pretty good. Hmm.
So now let's see if it actually fits. Which way up should I put it? I think smooth side up. Oh, the holes are a hair small. That was close though. Yeah, all four screw holes are in the right spot. Excellent. Okay, now let's see how it looks. Yeah, much less glaring. That's awesome, actually. That was a fun little project and a fun little diversion for a quick 3D print as well. That's just that same translucent filament that I used for the... Uh, for the bulbs for the front of the house a few weeks ago. Might as well use it. I've got a bunch of it left. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions down below as usual. I'll put a link to a couple of different places where I found this kit. It wasn't where I bought it from, but um, and it wasn't the exact same kit, but it's close enough anyways. Um, feel free to use the search terms and uh, try and find a better deal on it. Anyway, um, yeah, questions, comments, as usual. Um, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later. Oh, happy holidays, whichever holiday you happen to be celebrating at the moment. Cheers.